So over the last decade, the diffusion and adoption of artificial intelligence and its related technologies across the world became a new flashpoint of international competition. So Chinese exports render automation at scale more affordable for developing countries by trading readily deployable algorithms cheaper and in most cases assist automation efforts of technologically less developed countries by reducing their dependence on trained human capital. So this cost-effective Chinese AI export doctrine helps importer countries streamline decisions without having to train and employ armies of highly skilled programmers or engineers. So while these countries cannot compete with more advanced and indigenously um, developed AI technologies of the US, EU or Japan, that's not the point. They gain a clear advantage over their regional rivals that cannot afford Western AI technologies, yes, also, yet also don't import from China due to their US alliance commitments. So over time, developing nations that embargo Chinese AI exports due to their alliance commitments to the EU or the US or due to ethical concerns about Chinese AI, they lose their competing power against other rivals that are bound by neither and look to Beijing for high-tech imports. So therein lies the Chinese competitive advantage in AI exports and the core of the global competition for technological influence between the US and China. Chinese strategy is as much about controlling global cost-effective AI demand and defining the mainstream market. This is why, while most countries realize that investing in AI is important, they're largely divided over how much they should invest in or which specific subcomponent and which leading nations to cooperate with to maximize the chances of a successful AI adoption. This kind of uncertainty, the United States and China grew locked into a competition over global AI dominance, both by trying to maximize their respective capacities and exporting their own products to the world. Both countries prioritize capitalizing on the rapid growth in computing capacity, producing and processing increasingly bigger data sets, develop newer and more sophisticated algorithms and statistical methods to increase the quality of their predictions and creating an investment ecosystem that can financially sustain these advances over the long term. Uh, additionally, both countries seek to leverage AI to build and maintain new alliance and partnership patterns that can bolster their international standing and export dominance. The autocratic monarchies of the Gulf Council Cooperation are betting on technology for economic development and to help diversify their oil-dependent economies. Some of the incentives that uh, the region's governments offer for businesses, including the international technology sector, uh, include attractive tax breaks, uh, high net investments from large sovereign wealth funds, in addition to investments in the uh, ICT infrastructure and mega projects such as smart cities. For example, in 2020, Saudi Arabia's public investment fund made an investment of 3.5 billion US dollars in Uber, while this year, uh, an Abu Dhabi investment company made an investment in, uh, in, in messaging app Telegram. The region's growing influence in the international technology sector is, is bad news for human rights, giving its abysmal human rights record and governmental exploitation of technology to, to control dissent and maintain political power. However, what's important to note here is that digital authoritarianism in the GCC has broader regional consequences. The UAE and Saudi Arabia in particular have on more than one occasion shown their willingness to deploy their digital oppression toolbox beyond their, uh, the GCC borders and specifically in other countries in the Arab region. For example, in 2019, the United Arab Emirates and its ally Egypt launched a, a propaganda and a disinformation disinformation campaign on social media in support of the military regime in Sudan just days after a brutal crackdown on a pro-democracy sit-in that was calling for an end to military rule. 